Hi and welcome students to the instructional video on how to take girth measurements. The girth measurements are very essential for a fitness instructor and a personal trainer because it allows us to give us an idea on any sort of changes in a client's body shape. And also the beauty of girth measurements is that they're not very invasive. So the girth measurements that we're going to go through today are the main torso girth measurements, the chest measurement, the waist measurement and also the hip measurement. And we're also going to go through the limb measurements of the upper arm, the upper thigh and also the calf. To start off with, it's also always important to start off with the torso measurements. So I'll take you through now how to do the chest, waist and the hip measurements. To make sure that before you're starting off, always make sure that you obviously have a tape measure. It doesn't matter what type of tape measure that you use, just as long as you're consistent with your measuring technique. So to start off with the girth measurement, all we're simply going to ask our client to do is, um, in a standing position, um, always keep in mind that we try and take our girth measurements from the standing anatomical position. So the way Simon is standing here now is perfect. We just simply want him to stand like so. We're going to take the the chest girth measurement, all I'm simply going to ask Simon to do is raise his arms up to his side. I'm actually going to approach Simon from the front and I'm going to reach around and pull the actual tape measure tight up against his back. Once I've actually got it up and around his torso, I'm going to ask Simon to raise his arms down by his side and just relax him and stand in a nice neutral relaxed position. All I'm simply going to do is take the tape measure across the front of Simon's chest and in, on the nipple line of Simon and all we're simply going to do is line up the, the one and the number that it actually comes in line with. So for there, what we've got there is Simon's chest measurement is 95.5 centimetres. Simply take the tape measure down and moving on to the waist measurement. The waist measurement is fairly simple. You simply want to find the narrowest point around the waist. Uh, a number of texts and uh, uh, instructional manuals will show or it describe different ways of taking the waist measurement. What we're simply looking for is that smallest point around the waist in line with the umbilical button. Now that doesn't mean you have to go ahead and palpate the umbilical button. It's pretty easy to find the narrowest point around the waist. I'm going to do it the same as the chest. I'm going to go put my arms around the actual client and I'm going to go and bring it around and just find the actual spot where the is its narrowest point and I'm going to take his girth measurement. So for Simon's girth measurement it is 78 centimetres. Now one thing you need to keep in mind when you're taking girth, just a quick point, is we do not want to pull the tape too tight. Okay, by pulling the tape tight it doesn't give us an accurate measure. We want to have it so the tape is just sitting nice and comfortably up against the client's body and then we can take the girth measurement that way. Moving on to the hip circumference, or the hip measurement. What we're going to get here is we're going to get the client to stand side on. And what we're going to do here is we want to get the obviously the widest point around the hips. But we also have an anatomical landmark that allows us to guide us in the right direction. We have a bony point on the actual upper part of the femur called the greater trochanter. And it's not too hard to find that on most clients. It is generally the bony part of the actual part um, of the top of the femur there. Once you've found that point, taking the girth measurement from the side, we actually reach around, if someone can just get, move his arms out of the road, bring the tape measure around, keeping it in line with the greater trochanter which is right here, and same deal, going for the widest point around the hips, and for today, Simon's girth measurement around his hips is 95 centimetres. Okay. So with those three girth measurements that we've just gone through there, we just want to make sure that we are keeping a consistency on the actual girth measurements and ensuring that we do not actually pull the, the actual tape measure too tight when, the, when we're taking them. The first limb girth, girth measurement that we're going to go through today is the upper arm. Upper arm is quite a simple one to do, but we do have to make sure that we do get a midpoint between two anatomical positions to do that. What we want to make sure that we do with the actual client is obviously tell them what we're going to be doing. So we want to make sure to say, so I'm just going to be rolling up your sleeve so I can take your upper arm girth measurement. We roll the, the sleeve up the top, okay, keeping the arm in a nice relaxed position. Okay, A lot of students make the mistake of having the arm flexed or having the arm out by its side when they take this girth measurement. It, remember it is down in the anatomical position. 
What we need to do here is when we're taking this girth measurement is we want to find the midpoint between the, uh, uh, the acromion process and the electronong, uh, electronong process in the elbow. So all we simply do is we find the top of the acromion, which is the bony part here on the top of the shoulder. Take the girth tape measure, we take it down the length of the arm. We ask the client to bend the arm at the elbow and then we simply find the length of that, uh, the length of the actual upper arm, which is 36 centimetres. Half of 36 is 18, so we have our pen. We go ahead and we make a mark on the arm at the 18 centimetre mark. Once we've gone ahead and done that, we get the client to put the arm back down to the resting state. We take our tape measure, we come around the arm. The client can go ahead and take the arm away from, from the side. Keep it nice and relaxed in line with that mark that we made on the arm and then take the girth measurement just like so. So today the right circumference for Simon's upper arm is 32 centimetres. When we're taking girth measurements on, on the actual limbs we obviously take them on both sides, both the left and the right hand side. The protocol remains the same. The next girth measurement that we're going to do is the upper thigh girth measurement. Like the upper arm, we have to find the midpoint between two points. The two midpoints, uh, the two anatomical positions we're, that we're actually measuring between is the iliac crest, which is the bony part of the actual hip, just on the front here, and the top of the patella. So it's not difficult to find the top of the patella, it's quite easy to find. So we're just going to find the midpoint between those two points, and then we'll take the girth measurement. So, take our tape measure, Find the top of the actual iliac crest, take it down to the top of the patella, which is 51.5. Half of 51.5 is 25 and a half. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask Simon if he can just raise up his short on his thigh for a little bit for me. So what I can do here, a little bit higher, that's it. I've raised it up, I've got my pen here. I'm going to make a mark where the actual girth measurement will be taken from. Once I've actually got that mark, I'm going to take the, girth, uh, the tape measure, Take it around the actual circumference of the thigh, making sure it's in line with that mark that we've made, and take the girth measurement. So for today, Simon's right thigh girth measurement is 55.5 centimetres. And again, take it on one side, you must do it on the other, same procedures apply. The final girth measurement that we're going to take today is the calf girth measurement. For the calf girth measurement, we are simply going to head, go ahead and take a, a midpoint mark between two anatomical positions. Those two anatomical positions for the girth measurement is the top of the tibia. And the top of the tibia generally is not that hard to find. You will find that there is a, a point in our clients where there's a bony top part of the actual tibia uh, between there and the lateral malleolus of the ankle joint. So we'll simply go ahead, find the top of the tibia, midpoint, um, between those two, so the length of it is 41 centimetres, so that's 20.5, which is the midpoint. Take our pen, 21.5, just like so. And then we take the girth measurement, we do take the girth measurement from the front, so we use that as our marker though. So we can take it around, just like so, and whoops. And take the girth measurement, and today on Simon's right leg, Right calf muscle is 35 centimetres.